So, um, well, uh, the first thing I'll address is the scale of my work. Because I'm often asked, why do you work so small? Um, why are things so miniature and why that, why that scale? And there's a couple of things from my, um, my background that actually led, led to that. But one is um, that uh, my background is in textile design. So my, um, in part of that training, we would look at large scale tapestries, woven pieces. So there'd be the slide of the large piece and then they would show a slide of the detail. And it was that detail, that small part, that I was always most interested in. It's like almost saying, well, here's what the artwork looks like, but if you really want to see it, here's the detail. And this is the, the important part. So that led me, I think, to work in the small scale. And also, working in the museum field as a curator for um, about 20 years, the average art time that someone will spend in a museum looking at a piece of artwork is about three seconds. And so if you're able to kind of up that and um, you know, allow them to look more at it and kind of you know, engage them, you kind of won or you've got more of their interest. Um, as far as um, scale, um, uh, I grew up, I have 10 brothers and sisters. So I shared a bedroom with five other brothers. We had three sets of bunk beds. I had a little sort of like cubicle. It was all my stuff. So, you know, my being able to uh, um, be creative in a small physical space, I was very limited as to what I had to work in. And so, uh, the other, bio, you know, from my biography that I'll mention, that has some relevance in terms of the scale and the format is um, uh, time I spent in a cloistered monastery. So I was a Franciscan friar for a year and a race Catholic. And one of the things that you're exposed to are things that are called relics. Um, or where the Eucharist in the Catholic Church is displayed in the monstrance, which is a large elaborate um, um, metal structure that then has the host in the middle of it. So this thing about this idea of icons and artifacts and something that you might save and collect having a lot of import. A similar parallel is like, say for example, a business, they save the first dollar bill they've made in it. Or you collect sand from a beach or bring back a rock or a shell from something. These small little fragments that in a microcosm represent something much larger, right? But they have a lot of importance. So as a small child, you can think about imagining saving these little things that, that didn't have an awful lot of space to kind of keep them in. Um, would have been important. So that's a little bit of my background, I think, as to what led into me working in this scale. Um, so I work in collage and assemblage. As I mentioned, my background was in textile design. So there's often something fibrous or some element of thread in my, in my work. Um, this particular piece was part of a series um, called Mining the Archive. And I've worked on a number of different projects, probably for about going on 30 years now. And for every project, I will um, save, um, I'll make a piece, and it might be a commission, and I will save the, uh, the file that I worked on with that piece. Um, so this, this particular piece, I was um, asked to do something for a fundraiser for Shea's Performing Arts Center, and so as part of it, I collected a lot of material, um, including um, plans of this. So this piece is about, it's really kind of an icon, um, or an homage to Shea's Performing Arts Center. So what's embedded in here are images, materials, references, diagrammatic, stru diagrammatic structures that relate to shades. So this is a part of a series of about 33 pieces, and each one has to do with a place or a person or perhaps an event. Um, so part of that file, um, of course, was lots of images that relate to, relate to shades, um, and fragments of these things, again, images, materials, um, are embedded in there to represent it. I'm also interested in getting lots of levels and layers to the piece. Um, they're very intimate, they're small pieces. You're really meant to come up to it and really sort of examine it. I mean, if you think about, there's a lot of information on a postage stamp. You think like, well, there's a lot of stuff going on in a postage stamp. There's a lot of stuff going on in any paper currency. But if you look, there's a lot of details. Where this comes from and how I began the series is um, I'm looking for creating a structure, a format, and then I develop that from that. And often that comes from things that I've been given, either got myself or been given by other, often other artists who think that I can use uh, materials. So an artist, um, Don Jordan Dussel, had bought somewhere at an estate sale a large quantity of these small filters for cameras. So when I'm often using magnification devices or filters for glass, again, I'm interested in creating these levels and layers between the viewer and creating, again, a little, a little private little world inside of there that you really have to decipher 
to kind of decode everything that's going on in there. The multiple levels of, again, imagery, um, lines, structure, references, materials. So I'll have something, and then I'll begin to play with it and wonder, well, how can I use this? What can this do? Right? And so it turns out you open it up, and it can turn into this little oculus here. Okay? So the square format here, again, comes from more material. It turns out that Donna Jordan Deuce also gave me um, the same material of um, segments of um, samples of uh, fabric and fiber and different wall textures. So leather, different textured materials. So what I started with was squares of these materials that were done so that they would fit, you know, proportionally with the center square. But, um, and then began to develop the piece in layers and levels underneath the piece. So you're looking at it and you're looking through um, a number of different materials, um, including transparencies, so I'll make covers, I'll make um, uh, transparencies, um, out of this happens to be the floor plan of Shays. Where the artifacts come in, those are things that I've collected or have been, or have been given. So in preparation for doing the piece on Shays, and this goes back to the piece itself was done in 1999. Uh, they restored and conserved Shays Theater, a number of all the materials, the surfaces, the, 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 uh, the wall um, coverings, the carpeting. And so I was given a number of the materials that were from the conservator of what came out of, and they're fragments of Shays. So this is actually a piece of the uh, Scarfito, um, which is the fake marbling that's in the theater. Um, there are pieces of the chandeliers. Okay? There are pieces of the, um, um, the metalwork, uh, pieces of the uh, gold leaf um, plaster um, components for it. So these all become, each one of these is a relic from the theater. Right? So again, as I'm creating a piece, this one particularly has a piece of this, this, um, this faux um, marble finish that's actually on plaster. So, so each one of them, and again, what I'm doing is a series of 33, so I'm trying to not re kind of recreate what I've done in past ones, challenging myself, um, bringing a lot of elements to um, uh, design, structure, and format out of them. Um, but they're meant to be, and it, it, it's interesting, the height of how it's, of where it's hanging is important because you really have to kind of like get into it off and the light is, uh, is part of it. So there's about seven layers that you're actually looking through. Um, um, between the glass, the acetate, and then levels that are a series of um, um, uh, series of mat board and foam core that create these um, um, uh, just details that you meant to kind of explore and, and discover. So as I said, most of them were about um, sites. Um, Richardson Towers was another one, the, the Franklin Wright Darrell Martin House. Um, this one happens to have paper on it that's gold leaf. So the paper, whatever that square surface was, I would do a number of them randomly and then select the one that I thought had a resonance with the building or whatever the event was or what the, what the piece was about. Um, so I guess that's it. Mining the archive and this particular one is about Jay's performing arts. So did you do any hand painting at all with that? Um, there might be some basically like cloud. Yeah, there may be some things. I, I use a number of materials there. I use wash. Um, there may be some things in there that are tinted or colored, or there's some things perhaps that it's textured. Um, this particular one, um, that square of the gold paper that's on there, I wear that gold paint around it, so again, it has the illusion that it looks like it's one solid, one solid color. You said a, ther a series of 33. Is that 33 MJs? No. Like no. It ranges from um, um, some are about people. Um, they all derive from a file if I had done something about that. So uh, the Pan American Exposition, a number of City Hall, the Grain Elevators, um, uh, the Keenan Center. Uh, I just kind of worked through Warren Buffalo State College. I worked through different materials that I had, um, kind of hundreds of things that was about that subject. Or as they called Mining the Archive. I have file, files, hundreds of files that are organized thematically by, um, uh, well, by either person or subject, and then I had just shelving units. So it's not like uh, how Joseph Cornell organized his work. He had different drawers of metal materials, wooden materials, um, uh, letters. Um, there's all sorts of, you know, again, thematic and also um, material-wise that things are organized that I'm drawing from. Thank you. Okay. Thank you.